Okay, good evening, everyone. I, uh, my name is Kathy Orner. I'm Vice President and Chief Risk Officer at CWT. And here is my co-host this evening, Chris Busey, Deputy Legislative Auditor of the State of Minnesota. And we want to welcome everyone. We want to make this fun this evening, so we don't have a big script or ever, anything. And we just really want to thank our co-host again. Thanks to Eileen. Can we give her another round of applause? We want to thank all of you attendees for being here this evening. This is awesome. Last year, we had a few t tables at our inaugural first Visionary Awards evening, and this, you know, this year now we're out into the hall. Maybe next year we'll be all the way down. So thanks for that, and thank you so much to our sponsors. We really appreciate everything that you've done for us and supporting us. So round of applause for the sponsors. So we're going to um, get into our Maury's Awards this evening, and I'm really excited about this, but I'm going to turn it over to Chris because he is really the creator of these awards with some of you, but he was the name, he, he named the awards, so the author of them. So go ahead, Chris, I'll switch places. Well, first of all, I'd also like to thank everybody for coming out tonight, all of the attendees, all of the, all of the sponsors. I've been involved in the, in the Maury Awards or the Visionary Leader Awards uh, for a couple years now and to see this event blossom into where it, where it is today, it's pretty special to me. I think we needed this in our community and I think we need this in our profession. And uh, when we put this event together, we started off with the name Visionary Leadership Awards. And I think one thing that was clear to us on the committee is every cool award program uh, needs a cool name. Could you imagine if the Emmys were named the Film Awards, right? So we decided we wanted to have a, a good name for our event, so um, we worked on the format of the awards, and we ultimately decided that we wanted to call it the Maury Awards, and we named that after Robert T. Morris, and he was the author of the first major piece of malware that really, you can, you can arguably look back in 1988 and say Robert T. Morris was really one of the people that led to the cybersecurity profession. Um, he launched the first worm, that, uh, that caused um, worldwide impact. I believe uh, there was about 30% of the devices on the internet were impacted at that time by the Morris worm. And, uh, and he was also the first person who was actually convicted under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. So uh, pretty interesting history for him. He was a Harvard graduate um, and he was a Harvard grad. He actually was at uh, Cornell University as a grad student and he was basically testing some vulnerabilities at that point in time, and, uh, and he proved how vulnerable our profession truly was. Um, the good news with Robert Morris is that he actually turned out to be a good guy. Um, he ended up being a successful person in his career, and maybe someday we can bring him back to host the Maury Awards. What do you guys think of that? <laughs> So before we get going tonight, I want to just talk a little bit about our story and how we got to the point we are today. So when you look back at the Cybersecurity Summit, we have a history of recognition. Uh, in fact, we started off um, having a recognition award. It, it wasn't part of a formal ceremony. It happened um, during the event. Um, we started off by recognizing a private sector leader and a government leader. And in fact, uh, as you can see by the picture, um, I was one of the people who got one of the original awards um, when I served as the chief security officer for the state of Minnesota for 12 years, back in the days when uh, I sure looked a lot skinnier then. No, not taller. I can handle that. My mom smoked when she was pregnant, so I can take anything. But, uh, but se seriously, something was wrong with, with the format that we had in the past that I, th I thought was really important for us to correct. And all of us that are in the room today that work for corporations, that work for government, that work um, in academia, one of the things 
that I think it's, it's clear today, and I learned this so well working 12 years um, leading a, a government security function, is that we are in a world where white knights can't save the day. We're in a world where cybersecurity is a team sport, and success in this profession is all about many leaders at lots of different levels, all working in harmony. And that's what this awards ceremony uh, tonight is all about. So we changed the, War the Maury Awards to reflect the fact that, we, that the new reality today is that we're all part of a global cybersecurity ecosystem. And it, it's not fitting to recognize, recon, rec, or to recognize one leader of a company and recognize one leader of a government organization because that's not the way this world works anymore. So we still have some awards that we give out where we recognize the CISOs and the top leaders and companies. We have a security program leader. But we also are recognizing within companies that there's key operational leaders that organizations need to have to be successful. We need people that are truly visionary people that lead the SOC operations, and today that lead application security. So within companies, we need leaders at multiple levels. And that organization that we're part of today also has to be part of a broader global ecosystem as well. And at the national level, we need to have people in government that are helping set the national security strategy. And we are truly blessed as a conference to have a lot of those people um, in attendance tonight and at the conference today. So we have to have people at the national government security as well. And then we also have to realize that there's other parts of the equation as well. We need a feeder system. We need people in academia. We need, uh, we need students that are coming into the profession as well. And that's what we form, the, we, that's how we reshape the Visionary Leadership Awards, is that we wanted to make an award ceremony that recognized everybody in the profession that's gonna drive the future success. So last year was the first year of the implementation of the new concept, and uh, these were, this was the picture of the award winners last year. Uh, this year, when we're all said and done, we wanna make sure we get a really great picture with the award winners this year as well. Um, but this was the first, last year was the first year that we actually had the new concept for the Mori Awards. So what's special, what's cool about this event tonight? So first of all, the Maury Awards are peer awards. And every one of the people that's gonna get recognized tonight was nominated by a peer. And there were a lot of nominations that came in. So the people that are recognized tonight um, were the people that were selected out of lots of nominations. But those nominations came in from people in industry. So I always thought the best form of recognition is when your peers say that you're really good at your job and they recognize you. Um, for being a true expert in your, in your field. Secondly, the Maury Awards recognize truly remarkable people who often go unnoticed. And you're gonna see that today, and hopefully uh, we'll get to hear a few words from people that, that don't spend a lot of time speaking in front of public audiences, because we have some really remarkable people that we're gonna hear from tonight. And then finally, as I mentioned earlier, the Maury Awards highlight the fact that there is a vital bond that needs to happen in this community. There's a bond that has to happen within our corporations, between corporations and government, and between corporations and academia. This recognizes the fact that we are all part of that global ecosystem. And that's why I think the Maury Awards are so cool, and I'm so happy to see so many people out here tonight. When we put this all together, this is actually what I, this is what I dreamed of. So it, it, I feel like this is kind of my baby here tonight, so I'm really happy to have everybody coming out. So, now that you know a little bit about the history of how we got here, I'm gonna turn it over to my distinguished um, colleague, uh, Kathy Orner, to start the award ceremony. But before doing so, I have to tell you like one neat story. So, you know, Minneapolis-St. Paul, for those of you that are here from out of town, one of the things I have to say is Minneapolis-St. Paul has the best cybersecurity community in the nation. Uh, when, when I was a security leader, I got to know so many really cool CISOs that helped me out in government. And in fact, I told uh, the leader at Target that uh, when we were putting in our ArcSight infrastructure, they helped us kind of figure out how to put this all together. 
so there's, we have this great community in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and, uh, and I'm just really proud uh, to be part of it. But uh, Kathy Orner was a person who I had met um, when I was working as the state CISO. And uh, when Kathy is also in my wine club. So uh, this fall, when we were on our, our wine cruise on the St. Croix River, I, I, com I called her to duty at the end of the wine cruise after a whole night of trying 30 different wines. And, uh, and I convinced her, after all this wine, to join our party tonight. So here is Kathy Orner to take, out, take us away. And that's a true story. So to kick this off to begin, our first Visionary Academic Leader Award, a respected in academic and professional cir uh, circles. He demonstrates a passion for helping others, which is going to be a theme throughout these awards. Top rated local and international security speaker. He has published 100 plus articles for IBM Security Blog, and he's co authored two books on cybersecurity for executives. So, drum roll. Christopher Veltosas, uh, Mankato State University, Mankato. So, the computer information science professor. And this is my alma mater, so I was really excited to, to say this. And Chris, Christoph is not able to join us this evening, but accepting on behalf of Christoph is Dr. Aaron Budge. You want to join me on stage? Um, Christoph has, however, um, sent us a video, so you're going to hear from him directly. Hi, I'm Chris Veltos, faculty member at Minnesota State University, Mankato. I'm sorry I couldn't be here tonight, so instead I recorded this short video. I'd like to thank the Cybersecurity Summit organizers and the Selection Committee for the Visionary Leadership Award for selecting me as recipient of this year's Academic Leadership Award. This award represents confirmation of the hard work that we've been doing at the intersection of cybersecurity and business. I know that this award is going to be key to opening doors for our students who are eager to join the workforce. Congratulations to my fellow award recipients here tonight. I look forward to seeing many of you again at Cybersecurity Summit in 2020. Thank you. Have a good evening. So our next Mori Award goes in the Security Program Leader category, and this individual leads the Cyber Fusion Center at Target, oversees product security, data protection, enterprise incident management, essentially runs security at Target Corporation. Um, also a champion for inclusion and development of women at Target and in the industry, an executive champion of Target's Technology Diversity Action Committee, and the Mori Award goes to Jody Kaut, Vice President of Cybersecurity at Target Corporation. Thank you. Can you say a few words? Thank you for the recognition and the award. I think you did a good job of kicking this off and talking about this being a team sport. It's absolutely a team sport, so I'll say. For me, it's my team that makes me look so good, so thank you for recognizing the Target team tonight. Really appreciate it. Okay, the next Mori Award, the Visionary Application Security Leader. This is a gentleman who understands the intersection of healthcare and cybersecurity. He comprehends healthcare clinical use cases and trends in the medical device vulnerabilities. Founded, he founded a company driven by the mission to bring safety to patients. And the award winner goes to Mike Kajowski, Chief Executive Officer of MedCrypt.
Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, th thanks for the selection to the selection committee for this award. Um, four, four years ago, I left a stable, well-paying job at a medical device vendor to start a company focused on medical device security. My partner and I worked for the first six months getting our prototype together, had our first big pitch to a big medical device vendor. They listened to the whole pitch, and the guy said, medical device security is not a thing. Nobody cares about cybersecurity. You should probably start a different company. So it's good to see that three years later, there's a chance that that guy was wrong. Thank you. All right, the next award goes for the Visionary Security Operations Leader. And this individual took on leadership of Minnesota's Security Operations Center during a time of organizational change. Uh, this person improved the detection and response to security incidents across both state and local government. And this person provided cybersecurity assistance to Minnesota's law enforcement community uh, through the Fusion Center. And I'll have to say that as I announced that uh, the, uh, the winner of the Mori goes to John Israel, Manager of Security Operations, Incident Response at, and Forensic for the state of Minnesota. John, if you can come on up. Um, I, I actually... <laughs> I, I had the pleasure of, of working with John for years. And one of the things I have to say is that, especially in government, I just think it's really nice to see someone like John get an award because these individuals, I don't think people realize that they're called day and night, every single weekend. They're working on incidents that help protect all the citizens in our, in our state to keep them safe. These people truly are heroes. And when, uh, when I received my award as a leader, People like John are the reasons why I felt that the award is disingenuous and why we needed a different awards program because it's people like John that truly need to be recognized. So John, congratulations, and why don't you say a few words? Thanks, Chris. Uh, it's, it's actually really special to, to, to be able to come up here and get this award, particularly from one of my mentors and one of the, the people that I worked with for many years uh, at the state and, and one of the leaders that kind of helped build the security program that we have today. Uh, it's that I, I don't want to accept this for myself. I'm accepting this from the, on behalf of our entire team that, that, that works through the threats that I don't think, I think I'm preaching to the crier when I say that we're, we're dealing with uh, ever-evolving threats uh, across the industry, we're dealing with challenges of, of trying to find qualified workers that are able to, that, that are willing to jump into this industry, that are willing to learn, they're willing to take on these careers and, and take on leadership roles here. Uh, I, I, I'm blessed to have a, an entire team that, that has stepped up to take government wages to do a job that, uh, that they, they do it for their passion. They know that they're, they're doing this to protect uh, the, the citizens of Minnesota, they're protecting all of our data and, and all of the, the, the uh, different challenges that we face every day without the benefits that we may, may, may not get in other industries. So thank you very much. Uh, it's, I appreciate everything from this group and uh, congratulate all the other winners here tonight. Our next visionary, Maury's a winner. Our award winner is for the Security Awareness Leader. This individual is the president of the Minnesota InfraGuard chapter, the chief advisor for strategy, governance, physical security, privacy, and awareness training. The individual also is an expert on strategic projects relating to the smart grid with a specialty in electric vehicle management. So join me in congratulation, congratulating Jaron Montoya. They forgot our stool back here for me and you, Chris. They always do that. Chris and I have one thing in common, our, our mothers both smoke, so. And we're handsome. And we're incredibly handsome. <laughs> you know, one of, the, one of the premises for these awards was to, to recognize people for sometimes a thankless job, and I can attest to that. And 
I sat on a panel earlier, and a gentleman was saying he's been doing this for 10,000 years or whatever. And it, you know, although I haven't been doing it as long, it feels like an eternity. So now my my uh, congratulations to those who have uh, lasted so long in the community. But just as much as I've been, you know, working hard and trying to do what I can, and and doing so without a, a great deal of recognition, even more so, there's the people that are behind us doing that work. And it's not just our teams; it's the people that we have, our loved ones. So I'm honored to be joined tonight by my lovely wife, Kelsey, and my daughter in the back. And I think as much as uh, the award goes to me, I think this is really their award for standing behind me and supporting me through all this. So please uh, give us a, a warm round of applause, and especially to them. Our next award tonight goes to our visionary IT audit and assurance leader. This individual helps companies uncover cybersecurity problems from insider threat to criminal activity to breaches. Uh, this person also led advanced ethical hacking, security assessments, and numerous incident investigations. Finally, uh, this person was also a national advo advocate for women for a mentor of women and minorities in the STEM sciences. So how about a round of applause for the Moria winner for Visionary IT Audit Insurance, Mary France, Chief Executive Officer of Enterprise Knowledge Partners. Jared's right, it's uh, quite a tall podium, and I even wore my heels. He didn't wear his heels, so. Uh, <laughs> I wanna thank everyone for this opportunity, and most importantly, for my family, too, who knows I'm nocturnal, um, and has uh, lived with it for years, uh, but mostly for Eileen, because without her, we wouldn't have this, and everyone who has supported her and also the education that we get from our peers in this organization has been tremendous. We learn from each other, we grow with each other, and this organization will continue to grow as the years go on and the, the wonderful people that I've met that I'm looking at today. So thank you so much for this opportunity. And uh, again, thanks to my family, my husband did join me and he knows that I probably haven't been to bed in a couple of days now. So um, <laughs> thank you so much for at least seeing me today. That was, that was nice. <laughs> The next award winner is the Visionary Governance Champion. This individual served as Undersecretary for the National Protection and Programs Direct Doctorate at the Department of Homeland Security. She is the Director of the Defending Democratic Institutions Project at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. She has a dedicated career to strengthening cybersecurity to protect the nation's critical infrastructure. So please join me in congratulating Suzanne Spaulding, Senior Advisor, Department of Homeland Security. <laughs> Suzanne is not able to join us this evening, but she too sent in a video. So. Good evening. I'm so sorry not to be there in person with all of you at the summit and tonight as you honor my fellow awardees such an impressive group uh, and really outstanding work that all of them are doing on behalf of a mission that we all care so deeply about. I'm really honored to be included in this group and I wanna thank the Cybersecurity Summit and the selection team for honoring me with this Visionary Leader Award. You know, having the vision is the easy part uh, and in fact, I built on the work of my predecessor, Rand Beers, who really began the intellectual uh, effort to think about how to make 
what was then the National Protection and Programs Directorate at the Department of Homeland Security a more effective and efficient organization? Uh, but, but even having the vision for greater unity of effort and transitioning to the cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency uh, really could never have happened without the hard work of the dedicated men and women uh, at what was then NPBD who rolled up their sleeves and, and locked themselves in an airless room for hours on end to work through the really challenging issues involved in bringing these what were then viewed as somewhat disparate entities within the organization together as a combined, if you will, fighting force uh, to better ensure the security and the resilience of our nation's infrastructure, the places that we gather, and the services and goods that we all depend upon every day. And so I really accept this award on behalf of those men and women uh, who did the hard work to bring this idea, to develop this plan uh, that was absolutely essential in getting Congress to approve this idea moving forward. And I want to applaud Congress, too, for having the vision to understand that this was not just about cyber, but that it was really important to embed this in the larger cyber uh, critical infrastructure mission space. Uh, and I think that's particularly critical as we move forward. We all understand the importance of that expertise and insight from across critical infrastructure that is necessary for both assessing and mitigating cyber risks and the broader disruptions that we care so much about. So I really thank, accept this award on behalf of those men and women at DHS. Uh, I also want to thank the team that is there now, the capable leadership of Chris Krebs and his team, who have continued this work and moved it forward to new levels of maturity. But again, particularly the civil servants who helped them each and every day, who inspired me when I was at DHS every day, and who continue to inspire me even now. So thank you very much for this award, and again, I accept it on their behalf. Our next award goes to a global security to the visionary global security leader. This individual is a widely published and recognized national security lawyer, an evangelist for the cybersecurity message, message nationally and internationally, and also a teacher of young law students and advisor to senior officials on the Council of Foreign Relations. Please welcome the, the Mori Award winner. Uh, Mr. Andrew Bereen, Senior Director, Semantic National Security Group, and I may add, the man with the best smile. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And uh, I was actually just commenting some others that, that there are so many people that were key and fundamental to growing this thing, but Chris's contributions as the state CISO to getting this happening here. So thank you, sir. Um, and and, and uh, I also want to call out my son, Magnus Bereen, uh, who's with me tonight. Um, he's super embarrassed right now. He's, he's a sophomore in high school at Edina, and he's dying right now. So, so uh, Magnus, they're laughing with you because, because uh, if they knew how much I love you, um, I, I just really wanted to, to say what a special honor it is to have you with me tonight. Um, and... and I guess I also kind of want to mention a couple of things, but my start in security is a little um, unique, perhaps. Uh, I started in security in securitized lending uh, because I helped financial companies in distress get their collateral back. Uh, that's right, I was a repo man. So, uh, so I, used to, uh, I used to joke that I got to uh, legally steal cars uh, for money in college. Um, and, uh, and the reason I get to that is um, one of the fundamental things that I learned while doing that job was that you should trust God, but lock your car doors. Um, and I think it applies to cybersecurity. I mean, obviously, our biggest vulnerabilities are the human components of these systems. Um, and then the other thing I want to say um, is the intelligence community has been a huge fundamental shaping 
uh, entity in my own life and my own career. Uh, and just the thousands and thousands of professionals that I've interacted with through my time in the military, uh, interacting with, with folks from the, the FBI, from CIA, uh, from other Department of Defense agencies, uh, Department of Homeland Security, when that got going. Um, you know, it, it, it sounds bizarre maybe to some of you who haven't been close to public service, um, but I just, I can't claim this. I, I take what I value from others in this community and I try to share it. So, uh, you know, I just, that, that's what I have to say is, is, is that. And then and the other thing about God and security, uh, in, in the halls of the Central Intelligence Agency, there's a little shop where they sell souvenir items. And a number of the souvenir items have, uh, have this really cool CIA logo. It's a shield, an eagle head, and a compass. And it's very American. It says, in God we trust, all others we monitor. <laughs> and, 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 and I mean that. And going to the DEF CON conferences out in Vegas with the hacker community and working with the folks on the corporate side at Symantec and with the government folks, uh, I think what we all share is kind of a, a recognition and a gallows sense of humor. Uh, but we also share an optimism and a hope for what we can do collectively. Um, so I just want to say thank you again to all my mentors in this space. It, it really is its because of you. It's because of my colleagues. Uh, and actually, one of them there, John Neal, is on my team now at Symantec. John Wave. John was an FBI uh, special agent for a long time. Uh, worked on the Hill on Homeland Security issues. Uh, and is actually a lot smarter than me. Knows a lot more about cyber and about security. Uh, and I've been very fortunate that I've had teams uh, where, where I've been able to hire people that know a lot more than me, and, and John's a perfect example of that. I'm glad that I got to be both corporate family, government family, and my family family uh, uh, here with me. So thank you all very much. This is a really, really humbling honor. Thank you. And the last award of the night, this is actually uh, a special award because we decided not to issue an award to an individual, but this year we decided to issue an award to an organization. And, uh, and this is a very special uh, organization in the security community. It has an international mission to identify, promote, and sustain security best practices. It links a global community of professionals to continuously refine best practice cybersecurity tools and resources. And finally, this is an organization um, that, hold, that hosts both the MS ISAC and the new elections infrastructure ISAC for our nation. And I would like to um, give a special award out tonight um, to the security organization, the Center for Internet Security. And accepting that award will be Tony Sager, Senior Vice President and Chief Evangelist. So Tony, if you can come up. And Tony, you should tell people about how cool your organization is and the tools that you make available for all of us in both the private sector and government. <laughs> oh, I, got, I have time for a commercial. That's even yeah. better. Wait, and you know, I actually feel kind of tall up here at this, uh, <laughs> which has never happened in my career. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, I, let me just bring the uh, greetings and thanks from the CIS, the Center for Internet Security Workforce, and I'm really honored to to be here to represent this group, great group of people. We're up to about 250 plus people now, dedicated to this mission, uh, absurdly young. I'm the old guy in the group now, I think, but it's a really, uh, just a neat example of the kind of community behavior that we all need. We have this astounding range of missions from the operational missions in the ISACs, right? We are 24 seven, you know, supporting, I think uh, north of 7,000 state, local, tribal, territorial governments right now. Uh, and we've built that up over years. As you heard, we're now the election infrastructure ISAC, one of the most complex, politically touchy uh, security problems in, these, you know, in the entire industry today. And we have this worldwide volunteer army uh, developing, supporting best practices. And if there's one theme that kind of unites all of our work, it, it would go something like this. In cyberspace, we all have more in common than we do that's different. And we ought to start behaving like it. And this is not like bumper sticker, rah, rah, kumbaya, you know, singing and dancing. This is about rolling up our sleeves, doing work, right? Finding the problems that we share, create the content to deal with it, then realign our system of economics and decision making so that the right thing becomes the natural thing to do. 
that's the challenge that we have here. This is not a moonshot type challenge. This is not a scientific breakthrough thing. We need some of those. This is about realigning the way we think of risk in this space. And that theme of you know, being united around that, that's what brings folks like you into this room, right? That's the reason for this event and I, all of Eileen's hard work. And it really is uh, representative of the companies and the enterprises that you all come from. So this is, a, this is a big deal. I'm at 43 years now and counting as a cyber warrior for 35 at the National Security Agency, uh, the rest of it since retirement here in this nonprofit space. And let me just tell you this, you do not survive in this business for long unless you are a hopeless optimist. So there's nothing better than to be a, in a room full of people like me <laughs> accepting your generous recognition. So on behalf of the workforce at the Center for Net Security, we are honored, we are grateful, and we look forward to doing even more to help support you guys in our business of uh, surviving and thriving with greater confidence in the cyber world. So thank you all very much. applause for all of our winners. <laughs> so I want to give a shout out, a special thanks to the Visionary Leadership Award committee members. And if you could stand if you're here. Chris is already standing as you can see. Let's see. Todd Carpenter, uh, Jennifer Shapluski, um, Steen Falstad, in the back. Krishna Friedman, Brian Isle, and our beloved Eileen Manning. So thank you all for all your work. Uh, as, as Chris mentioned, there were many, many nominees, and it's a tough job to try to narrow it down, but there's so many, uh, the, just the, it's just so exciting. There's so many people to choose from here. So please, next year, think about this already. Make a nomination. Uh, we'd love to see them. And we have one more thank you slide to all of our corporate table sponsors. If we could get a round of applause for them. Okay, one logistic. If we can have the award winners meet in front of the sign to get a group picture. And I don't know, Chris, if you want to say anything to close out or? I'd just like to say thank you again uh, for everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, I hope as you look forward to 2020 that uh, you strongly consider nominating the, or the people in your community, in your organizations for an award. And uh, for those of you that are not from uh, the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, I hope you consider looking at a similar type of program because our community um, nationally needs to recognize the people that do the hard work in the trenches. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>